Hello, and welcome back to Reinfrastructure. Today, we will be talking about the Windy City Zone Airport, Chicago's O'Hare International. Once the largest airport in the world, its beginning started during World War II as a Douglas Aircraft Production Plant that produced B-17s along with other bombers. After the war ended, the city council unanimously decided to build a commercial airport on the location of the production facility. It was expected to cost about $40 million. Four years later, in 1949, the city named the airport for Lieutenant Commander Edward O'Hare. He was awarded the Medal of Honor by single-handedly defending the USS Lexington from a Japanese bomber attack. He downed five of the nine attacking bombers, but he died just a year later in 1943. The airport opened to passengers just six years later at the end of October in 1955. Its first flight was a Trans World Airlines flight from O'Hare to Paris. When the first passengers entered the airport, they were not greeted with the same amenities that we have today. All they had were a couple of vending machines filled with drinks and a few snacks. Over the next two decades, a few runways were installed and so were a couple more terminals, but other than that, not much happened. But in 1973, the airport got its first security checkpoint and an on-site hotel with 979 rooms on 10 floors. And after nearly 40 years since the designs for the airport were first drawn up, in 1984, public transit infrastructure was finally put in to connect central Chicago to the airport. After this train line was built, the last major expansion to O'Hare took place. In 1987, Terminal 1, also known as the United Airlines Terminal, and its satellite terminal were built. And just six years later, O'Hare constructed a terminal dedicated to the increasing need for international gates, Terminal 5. Along with this was a driverless people mover to connect it all together. However, the most recent runway built was two miles long and completed just a few years ago in 2013. It was nicknamed the Cemetery Runway because they had to move nearly 1,500 bodies from their grave sites, some from as early as 1849. That's over 150 years ago. Recently, however, the airport's been losing passengers, relatively, to some of the other airports, such as Atlanta. It's not like they're running out of people, though. They did still have 79 million passengers last year. Recently, the mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, has wanted to reverse this, and they want to climb the leaderboard again and get to the top of busiest airport in the world. So the airport designed the O'Hare 21 project, about modernizing it and bringing it into the 21st century. It will use no taxpayer money, and it will be much larger, which will make Chicago a better spot for international business. The airport will be paid for by airlines and the airport fees, which are added to every ticket price. It will come to about $8.5 billion, and it will have 35 extra gates. Up from 185, it will go to 220. That's a 25% increase. And there will be better flow between gates, with a 72% square foot increase from what it is currently at 4.3 million up to 7.3 million square feet. This is the first gate increase since 1993. That's 25 years. Accounted for in the $8.5 billion is insulation for about 12,000 homes, as airports are pretty loud and an expansion will make the airport even louder, so as to not hurt or harm the residents, they're adding in sound insulation. They've already completed about 11,000, with only 1,500 left to go. The hotel that I was talking about earlier will be renovated, and two more will be completed by the end of this project one by the International Terminal, and a second by the rental car facility. Terminal 1, which is 30 years old, and Terminal 3, which is 56, will both be getting rather large renovations, including a large renovation to Terminal 1 satellite terminal, which will have to connect to the two new satellite terminals. Terminal 2, the other 56-year-old terminal, 
will be getting completely demolished and it will be replaced with a new and better international terminal. The airport will be more unified so you can walk from one terminal to the next. Terminal 5 will have more gates and larger gates for bigger and wider planes and will have a new parking lot and it will have extended roadways for better drop-off and pickups to get back to Chicago. On top of all this are two new satellite terminals that will be connected by tunnel to Terminal 2 and to the other satellite terminal which already exists. And this tunnel will be extendable in order for it to increase in length for more gates to be added later on. In every one of the terminals, there will be more efficient security gates and bag claims along with a better check-in spot, including self-check-in. There will be more east-west runways, and there will be fewer ring runways in order to prevent crossing over runways which are dangerous and could cause airplane crashes. The airport itself is getting $700 million for better baggage handling infrastructure and better amenities such as, well, cleaner bathrooms, which is always nice, a better, like, better uh, lounges and water fountains, cleaner facilities, all that. In fact, they believe that this renovation will help spur $65 billion of economic activity for the greater Chicago area. There is a plan that may or may not happen. It's called the Western Highway Access and they're still trying to secure funding for it. It's very hopeful for the people who live in the suburbs of Chicago as it's an entrance that's on the west side rather than the east side so they don't have to go through all the traffic to get in through the east side and that means that they'll have a security checkpoint and they'll even have a few gates on that side. But it may or may not happen as there's a lot of red tape there. There is a plan that will happen that will transport people from the center of Chicago to the airport. It's from the Boring Company, which is owned by Elon Musk. It will go from Block 37, which is a big station in the center of Chicago, that is right next to one of the oldest skyscrapers in the world, the Reliance Building. It was built in the early 1890s. Block 37 is a lot of shopping as well. That will connect to O'Hare using small vehicles that will hold about 16 people each, and they will go at 150 miles per hour. They will be about $25, which is cheaper than taxis, but more than the current train that connects people. But since it's all privately funded, the Boring Company gets to keep the money, and no taxpayer money is used. It will work for 20 hours a day, with those extra hours being used for maintenance and track repair and that sort of stuff. And it'll work seven days a week and all the pods will be climate controlled, they will have luggage, and all the excess dirt that's removed from these tunnels will be used to make bricks and other building materials. While I was editing, I came over a pretty interesting fact. Edward O'Hare's dad, also named Edward O'Hare, was actually the lawyer who ended up prosecuting Al Capone and putting him in jail, and was later mysteriously killed by gunfire, I assume from Al Capone's mob connections, but who can tell? My guess is that it will be done by probably the mid-2020s, such as maybe 2026. Okay, well, thank you for watching Reinfrastructure. I have some other videos which I'll link to right up here. Yeah, there. <laughs> and, well, thank you for watching. See you next time on Reinfrastructure.